So let's see how mounting works. Conceptually, think of mounting as assigning the file system an address, maybe an access point or a doorway, something that will let us get access to it. And this process of having to mount a file system is the same. It doesn't matter if the file system's ext3, ext4, xfs, riserfs, you name it. In fact, it's the same even if the file system is mounted over the network such as NFS or Samba. So irrespective, we always have to mount the file system before we can get access to it. Now mounting can be done in either of two common ways. One, manually by hand, or two, automatically via a configuration file. We'll do it manually first. Unsurprisingly, mounting is done via the mount command. But, before we use the mount command, we need somewhere for our new file system to be mounted to. So, let's quickly create a mount point. And all that a mount point basically is, is an empty directory in our existing directory tree where we attach the new file system to so we can access it. So let's create a new empty directory called test mount. And then let's list it. Cool, a new empty directory, absolutely nothing special about it. We'll use this directory as the mount point for our newly created file system on dev sdc1, so that once it's mounted, we can read and write to it via test mount. So let's issue that mount command. So we use mount, then we do minus t ext4, because that's the type of file system we're going to be mounting, an ext4 file system. Then we tell it which device that the file system is on, so that's dev sdc1. And finally, we tell it the mount point in our directory structure where we want to mount it to, and that's test mount that we just created a second earlier. So let's run through that again quickly. We type mount followed by minus t and then specify the type of file system we'll be mounting. This time, like we said, it's ext4, but if we'd created our file system earlier as maybe xfs or ext3, then we'd need to specify xfs or ext3 here. The point being, what we specify here has to match the actual file system type on the device, otherwise the device won't mount. Next, we specify the path to the device that holds the file system. In our case, that's dev sdc1. And then last but not least, we tell it where we want the file system to be mounted. For us, that's our shiny new empty directory that we created called test mount. So let's hit enter. Looks good, no errors returned. So let's take a look and see if it is actually what we want. So we do mount minus L to list minus T ext4. So that tells us to list all mounts that are of type ext4. So let's hit return. And there we see at the bottom, dev sdc1 is mounted on test mount as ext4 and it's read write enabled. Brilliant! But let's see what would have happened if we'd specified the wrong file system type on the mount command. So first of all let's unmount it, so that's umount then slash test mount. Now let's change the file system type to uh, xfs let's say. So we change that to mount minus t xfs and then dev sdc1 and slash test mount. So there we go, we've got to match the file system type, otherwise we're just not in business. Now as we want to write some files to the mounted file system, we need to go mount it again. So let's change that type to ext4, great. Now let's write some files to it, so um, we'll copy some files from the var log directory. Now let's list them to make sure that they're there. Great, so a ton of files in there now. But behind the scenes, we know that these files are on a file system on a specific device, dev sdc1. So an entirely separate file system and partition from where the rest of the local Unix file system is actually storing its data. Now what this means is that if we unmount dev sdc1, 
we lose access to the files that we just copied. So let's actually give that a go to prove it. So we U mount test mount. Now let's see what exists in that test mount directory. Nothing, not a byte, just our empty directory that we created a few minutes earlier. Now, if we were to mount dev stc1 to test mount again, we'd have access to those files again. Or we could even mount dev stc1 somewhere else in the file system tree and still get access to those exact same files. Why don't we give it a try? Let's create another empty mount point somewhere else in the file system. So, oh, uh, I don't know, somewhere stupid, somewhere obvious like, okay, one, two, yeah. So, sorry about the silly names for the directories, but at least it's clear that it's a different mount point to just slash test mount. Now, let's check that all of that worked. So, we'll cd into that directory, and let's print our working directory. Cool. Here we are on our new mount point. And actually, yeah, let's take this opportunity to create a new file here and show that we'll lose access to it when we mount our file system here. So let's touch, uh, we'll call it tremendous file. And then let's echo some text into it. So let's echo yee into tremendous file. Uh, actually, let's try that again, this time with single quotes. Probably doesn't like the exclamation point, the bang. So we echo single quote, yee Okay, that's better. So now let's cut it. Cool, so we've got a new obscure mount point deep down in the file system tree, and we've created a new file in it. Now let's see what happens when we go and mount our ext4 file system right over the top of it. So let's move out of the directory and let's remount it. This time to our new mount point. And now let's ls it. Oh and let's tag log on to the end. And there's our old files back and there should be no sign of our tremendous file that we just created. So let's just grep for that. And it's gone. So what do we learn from this? Well, we see that no matter where we mount our ext4 file system in our local Unix file system tree, we still get access to the files that are on it. We also see that when we mount a file system to a mount point, we lose access to any files and directories that were already existing in that mount point. But fortunately, we don't lose access to them forever. As soon as we unmount the file system, we immediately regain access to the files that were previously there. So, you mount, okay, and if we run an ls, oops, if we take the log off the end there, and there we go. Our tremendous file is still there, safe and sound. Brilliant!